talk that I'm going to give today is about um, the way in which we have trained teachers in the UK to use digital technologies from in, fra in fact the 1980s. We began experimenting in this area then. During the 1990s we had a very large national program, like your program, about digital technologies and as you would expect we made mistakes and one of the mistakes was that the government didn't realise that the trainers did not exist to do this work and I was very glad to hear today that your government has in fact got a very strong trainer programme in place and I think that will be a strength of the work that is being done here. If this project is implemented with a real desire to improve pedagogy, then one of the implications is that the balance between teachers and students will change and that students' knowledge and expertise will be much more valued and that hopefully, as was mentioned this morning, teachers will become the supporters of children. They won't be expected simply to impart information. A second one which I think is extremely important in terms of democracy is the balance between digital literacy and digital safety. And this will be an area where there will be very large conflict because the legal issues that network managers face and the need that teachers have to let children experiment, we advise is that um, the school is given a standard code of conduct and the teachers and the students discuss that and they modify it until they agree with it. We find that children given this responsibility are very responsible. And I think generally much more media training in understanding the agenda of people who are publishing on the internet. Because of course the big problem is that the internet is not policed in the way that books are. The freedoms are wonderful because everyone can publish, but not everybody realises the social responsibility that comes with that. Over the years, We've supported 16 different communities in setting up their own social network. I would like to change the terminology a little bit because social networks like Facebook are very good, but in terms of education, this is quite a trivial use of the technology. And we are developing practice and theory about um, professionals working together to create new knowledge. One of the ones which we helped with is um, Oracle designed a platform for teachers called think.com and we helped them work out how teachers could encourage children to build knowledge together. And for example, um, a group of children um, in different schools who were interested in horses phoned, formed a club and began to talk in some depth about what they knew about the riding of horses, the keeping of horses, and their work became very impress um, impressing because it was clear that they had a lot more knowledge than they were actually 
using in school. I think it requires the teachers to be very alert to the children's interests. It requires that the teachers have access to what is happening on the um, websites and that they um, ask permission of these children um, to act as experts, to provide their expertise in, in the classroom. And with um, things like Skype, for example, if a young person in the north of Argentina is identified as an expert in some area, then there's no reason why a teacher in the south couldn't ask permission to, for the class to Skype with this child. There are some very, very expert young people in, and often they get rather unmotivated in school because nobody notices. So this could be one way of doing that. It would be very interesting to explore more ways of doing that. We've done much the same with teachers who have um, interests. For instance, one of them was um, blogging. blogging, teachers blogging and blogging in the classroom and encouraging children to, to blog. That was um, another way in which a few teachers who had a particular specialism were able to find other people in the, com in, in the larger community that they could talk to, not necessarily in their school. This is what a community of practice, there's a lot of theories about how professionals or any group work together in this way and the theory that we're developing is called braided learning.